bird at Tom Mitchell. What's all the excitement about, Beth? I don't know, Tom. We were riding along when we saw those men trying to drive off Dad's cattle. Then they took out after us. It was Susco's men. I never recognized them. They must be new hands. What are you doing out this way? Just brought some things from the store you wanted. Old man Ruth must have given him a day off for good behavior. Oh, you needn't have done that. Dad and I are going to town this afternoon. I wanted to see you before that. Thought you might like to go to the dance with me tonight. I'm sorry, but... You're too late, Mitchell. Beth's going to dance with me. I see. Well, I'll ride along to the ranch with you anyhow. I want to see your father about that fence he ordered. Well, we don't need an escort. I'm not so sure about that. Bert, don't be like that. Of course, we're glad Tom came along. Why do you suppose those men were chasing you? Well, your guess is as good as mine. I wonder if it is. Well, if you boys are bound to fight, you might at least take me home first. We sure will. We can always fight. Can't we, Bert? Thanks, Tom. I reckon it's just another case of the big ranchers making it tough for us little fellows. Somehow they found out we'd formed a pool to protect ourselves, and they're trying to scare us out. But if they want to fight, we'll give it to them. Well, they do want to fight. They'll wipe out every last one of us and hog the range for themselves. I don't think Ike Manton wants that, but I can't say the same for Briscoe. They're riding together in this. All this trouble could be settled easily if only two men were out of the way. Are you meaning that I'm one of them? When I step on your toes, that'll be time enough to squawk. When you do, I'll do more than squawk. I'll call for you later, Beth. How about riding for me, Tom? You look a lot better on a horse than you do back of old Roots Counter. Well, I guess I do, but I'm satisfied. I'll need some good men with what's ahead. I suppose you're plumb set on going into town this afternoon. Well, of course I am. Ain't it Saturday? If you're trying to shy me off, don't. We'll all be there. And if the big fellas want trouble, they won't have far to look. And by big fellas, I mean Ike Manton and Kane Briscoe. Then I'll see you there. Goodbye, Ben. Goodbye. And I'm sorry about the dance. It's my fault for being late. I can't understand why he's content to wrangle flour, beans, and calico when he might be a top hand puncher. Maybe that's his business. Are you telling me it's not mine? Well, what do you think? <laughs> Let me know when my script hits town, Gogan. I sure will, Mr. Briscoe. holsters in this town. You better check your gun with a bartender if you want to stay here. And that goes for the rest of you boys. Why, sure, Sheriff. We'll check our guns until we need them. been rushing me to death. It looks like a big day, more ways than one. Yeah, they're all coming to town. Matton, McCaslin, Briscoe's boys are here already. And I suppose Graham and all the other little fellows ain't got no more sense than to come in, too. 
Buddy, it's good for business, uh, selling out the guns and carriages. <laughs> Oh, I suppose I'll have to open another case of that pain car. Them cramps is after me again. I got... Uh, Tom, will you... Uh, yeah, I'll wait on the customer. Hey, thank you. What can I do for you? Well, how about some shells? What are you gunning for, a man or beast? Well, give me something that's good for both. Are you still wearing a 38 on the 45 frame? Yeah, great 45 is too rough for me. It throws me every time. <laughs> if I could handle a gun like that, I'd run this country. Sure, if Briscoe would let you. Oh, thanks, Martha. going to be able to keep these factions apart? I don't know, sis. I can only do my best. I'm terribly worried. Mrs. Hawkins says Bert Mosgrip has been making war talk among the little ranchers, claiming the big ones will crowd them off the range. <laughs> and the big ones claim that the little fellas are stealing them blind. And there ain't any proof either way. Now, listen here. Don't you go worrying about that, Martha. You go in and fix up a nice big supper. Maybe I'll ask Ike Manton or Green out to eat. Not together, I hope. Say, now, there is a good idea. Sure, maybe we can just feed the fight right out of it. <laughs> Martha. Look at this. Is there anything else? Some coffee, please. Uh, Tom, well, you, will you go get the meal? I, uh, I don't feel like getting, uh, getting that far away. All right. Uh, something for you? Some uh, coffee, please. Pardon me. Tom Mitchell. I can't believe it. What are you going to do about it? There's only one thing I can do, Martha. Oh, Tom. Come into the office a minute, will you? It would be of any interest to you, Sheriff. I just saw Bert Mosquip right into town. He looks like he's about ready for anything. You're a pretty observant young fellow, ain't you, Tom? I suppose you think that that adds up to a nice, friendly killing, eh? What are you going to do about it? Well, Tom, you can't arrest a man for what you think he's going to do. No, no. It's what a man does that worries sheriff. <laughs> I see. And that brings me up to why I brought you in here. Uh, sit down, Tom. You know, I've been sheriffing for 20 years now. And all that time, I've tried to keep my trail clean. I have never compromised with a criminal in any manner, shape, or form. Regardless of the laws that folks have written for me, I've tried to enforce them with, without fear or favor. 
You believe that, don't you, Tom? Sure, I do. But what difference does it make what I believe? It makes plenty of difference to me. Because the time has come when I'm going to be forced to break that rule. Now, there's a fellow in this town that's wanted bad. He's a killer, some folks say. I don't know just exactly what to do about him, because I don't think he's half as bad as, as he's painted. And I'd hate to put him behind bars for what might be the rest of a useful life. But, at the same time, I can't compromise the oath I took when they hung this star on me. What would you do if you was me, Tom? I'm not you, Sheriff. So I don't know what I'd do. Hmm. You suppose that if I asked him in a nice way that he'd give me his promise not to smoke a shooting iron on his fellow man again? No, I don't. I don't think it's fair to ask him. Sometimes the law fails, and that throws a man back on gun law. And asking him to do that, you'd put a premium on his breaking his word. Oh, mm, maybe so. Well, then I won't ask him for his word. But mind you, if this fellow is a killer, like some folks say he is, he should stand trial, guilty or not guilty. But I can't forget that he's carried himself like a man. Laid aside his weapons. He's gone about his business peaceably. You know, like he meant it. And in doing that, he's made himself a lot of friends. Friends? Yes, sir, friends. And there's something that a man can't do without. Most of these friends have gone to the bat for him. One of them in particular. Offered good arguments in his defense. Potent arguments. So, I'm not going to arrest him, Tom. But, I'm warning him to be out of this town come sunrise tomorrow morning. Now, either that, or go to jail. Thanks, Rock. Well, Eli, I'm quitting. What's that? Sounded like you said you was quitting. But I know that can't be. <laughs> Must be these cussed hiccups. Reckon I need some more painkiller. Or do you suppose that's what's giving them to me? I mean it. I've got to... I mean, I'm leaving. But why, Tom? Don't I pay you good? Why? Well, this place couldn't get along without you. Of course, I've been lucky knowing that you were cut out for better things. It isn't that, Eli. You've treated me fine, and I've been satisfied. Well, then what's wrong? Well, I, I reckon I've got itchy feet. Don't get too far away. I'm only going to the store, Dad. Hello, Beth. Hello, Tom. I wish you wouldn't go with Bert tonight. But I promised. Why shouldn't I? It's not that I want you to break your promise. But Bert is asking for trouble, and he's apt to get it. And you'll be in danger every minute you're with him. What do you know about the affairs of this town? I know there are two men threatening the peace. Kane Briscoe and Bert Mosscrift. Well, have you talked to the sheriff about this? Old Rock is just standing between them. But you can't buy peace that way. When they're ready to go, they'll shoot him down the first blast. What would you do about it? Call him out. And if they didn't turn yellow, I'd put him away. That's the only way you can stop a war. Tom, I didn't think you could be like this. I know it's terrible, but what are we going to do about it? I don't know what you can do. But me, I'm getting out. Leaving. I don't understand you, Tom. Talking so big and then running away. The rest of us can't run. Bert's staying, fighting for what he thinks is right. Well, goodbye and good luck wherever you go.
Shoot him, Mr. Manton. We only shot in the air. Take him inside, please. Better get your men out of town, Graham. Most of you have your wives with you, and you better think of them. If you don't, they'll be wheeling you home. You're right, Tom. This killing business is all wrong. I'll gather the boys up. No, you won't. This is another reason why we've got to take the fight to those hogging outfits. They didn't give Rock a chance, and they won't give us one. No one's going to tell me what to do. Least of all, a lily-fingered calico clerk. Bumpert! Tom's not healed. Get him out of here. Good work, young fella. You handed him a nice trimming. Just what he's been asking for. Miss Martha, there's some talk my boys did this. They swear they didn't. And I'm believing them. It wasn't your boys, Mr. Manton. Who did it, Tom? I don't know. But I aim to find out. You saved this town a bloody gun fair, son. I'm not looking for any trouble, neither am I sidestepping any that's forced on me. Thanks to you. I reckon we can go home now. Are you sure you don't know who killed him? I swear I don't. You won't have to go away now. I never thought of it that way before. I believe you, Tom. Thanks. Same Tom Mitchell done quit you. Yeah, he was going away, but when the rock was killed, Tom seemed to change his mind. You know, his quitting's been by hard on me. I ain't had a drink in a week. Who do you reckon will be appointed sheriff? Mm, I hear talk that Briscoe wanted Martin to appoint Sassy Drogan, but he wouldn't do that. Well, Drogan make a good sheriff for Driscoll. Yeah. <laughs>
Hello, Mr. Graham. Hello, Bear. You still need a top hand? I changed my mind about giving you that job. My friends in the pool don't think so well of you since you whipped Bert Muskrat. I'm sorry they took it like that. But it's all right about the job. Mr. Manton has offered me one. Must be very nice to be in such demand. There's some talk that Briscoe is going to have Drogan made sheriff. If he does, there'll be civil war in this country. Manton is county chairman, and he wouldn't stand for anything like that. Manton's as bad as Briscoe. They're both dead against us little fellows. And that isn't true, even if Bert Moskrip says so. Better leave Bert out of it. I wish he'd stay out. We got work to do, Beth. What's the matter, Beth? Why have you changed? It's you who's changed. Ever since the day the sheriff was killed, you've been different. I can't think of anybody that could take old Rock's place. I can think of somebody. You can do it. Me? Why, that's plumb crazy, ma'am. Maybe not as crazy as it sounds. Steady, dependable. Since this trouble started, you criticized my brother for standing on middle ground. I resented that at first, but after what happened, I know you're right. You'd have called out the leaders of the two factions for the only kind of settlement they could understand. That will be the platform of the man I'll support for sheriff. But I can't, Miss Martha. If I pinned the star on, I'd be the joke of the town. No man that handled Bert Moskrip the way you did could be looked upon as a joke. I've got Ike Manton's promise that he'll hold an election. I can elect you if you'll only say the word. There are plenty of reasons why I shouldn't be sheriff, even though I wanted to be. You know. Then you're the friend Rock spoke about. Yes, Tom. I never interfered in his business before, but he granted me that one favor, the favor that was to see you leave us. Now Rock's gone and you're here. You won't make me send you away, will you? I can never do that, Miss Martha. Though I'd be better off to go. If you think you can pin a star on me, go ahead. I'll do my best. I'll get the badge for you. And I know you'll honor it. I know that Rock would have wanted Tom to step into his boots. You're absolutely right, Miss Mother. I'm for Tom Mitchell. So am I. This election can only end one way. Drogan, you're going to be our next sheriff. This trouble has got to be settled. And the only man that can do it is Tom Mitchell. He's taking on a man-sized job. Well, I'm sure he can do it. I'm for Mitchell. We'll swing it his way. He's a man for us. Where will you, Martin? He'll do for me. I'm telling you, Mitchell's with the big fellow. Isn't Manton for him? Why, he'll help him down it. Hey, Eli, are you for Mitchell? Huh? Of course I'm for Tom, but he don't stand a chance against Briscoe and Gogan. I know you can do it, Tom. Predicted it all the time. You beat Gogan three to one. We'll have law and order now. Go get him, Tom. If anybody can stop this fight, you can. Wait a minute, folks. I haven't been sworn in yet. See you later. Okay, go on. We'll take care of that. It's kind of foolish, isn't it? What do you think? The boss wants to see you, and I wouldn't keep him waiting if I was you. He's a very impatient man. You mean our good friend Briscoe? I don't mean nobody else. There's only one boss in this town, and no room for another. Savvy? You tell Briscoe if he's got anything to say, come to me. I'll be easy to find. Yeah, plumb easy. Tom, Tom. Congratulations, young man. This is the happiest day of my life. You did it, Miss Martha. Nonsense. You ought to realize now how many friends you've got in this county. You tell him, Beth. There are two or three people I want to see before they leave town. Tomorrow you'll take the oath of office. What will you do about the trouble? It's sort of cool down during election. Maybe it won't flare up again. If it does, I'll settle it in my own way. 
You can't do that, Tom. You'll be sheriff. You can't kill men for what you think they intend to do. A sheriff can't even kill when men break laws, except to protect his own life. You must remember that, Tom. Otherwise, you'll be no better than an outlaw. The time will come when I'll have to balance the proper behavior of a lawman against the good of this county. Promise me that when that time comes, you'll not kill except to save your own life. I can't promise that. There are too many other people to consider. Please, Tom. For your own sake. For mine. All right. I promise. You act like you're acquainted with those smoke wagons. Now that you're sheriff, I want to talk to you. What troubles you outside of trying to drive all the small ranchers out of the valley? You talk like Bert Moskrip. I don't want any more land. I got too much now. I just want protection. You're the only one who can give it to me. I lost a hundred head of stock in a month. McCaslin and Briscoe claim to be shy even more. Maybe Moskrip hasn't riled up the others in the pool to do it. The talk is that he has. I like to get along peaceable. But if you don't act, I'll be forced to myself. You know what that means. That means open war. Something I want to avoid. You let me handle this. My own way. There's another question never been answered. Who killed Old Rock? There's a lot of people who think you boys did it. But I know they didn't. I believe the answers to both these questions lie closer together than most people think. Go to it. I don't care who gets burnt, as long as I quit losing stock. Come on up the oasis and let folks look you over. Oh, I don't want to make them laugh yet. <laughs> if they do, I reckon you've got what it takes to change their tune. Thanks, but I've got a very important letter to write. Then I'll go and see what the odds are on how long you last. Well, looky, gents. A nice little cracker clerk all loaded down with six guns. them guns. Too bad somebody makes a meter before the week's over. <laughs> Why, you wild shooting longhorn? What's the idea? Just this. From now on, I'm running this town. And don't forget it, all of you. Because if you do, this place will be bearing its first laughing hyena. He ain't getting away with that. I'll settle him. Shut up, Rogan. You'll get your chance. Only not by talking. Good show you put on out there, Mitchell. I was a heap impressed. It showed me a side of you that I hadn't even suspected. Now, it's my judgment that you've got what it takes to be a real sheriff. That is, providing you line up right, if you savvy what I mean. I don't, but I'm listening. Good. I thought you'd be smart. Now, uh, 
Now, here's the angle. If land is grabbed off for nothing and sold to advantage, it means money for both of us. How do you and I stand up in a business way? We don't. I'm writing the law, and you're keeping it. If you don't, I'll call you out. Oh, big, strong man, huh? Well, I never saw one yet who didn't have a weak link somewhere. Yeah? I've made plenty of deals along that line, and I'll make some more. We'll see about that. All right, Tom, I'm glad to see things my way. I'll let you know when I want you to move. Tom, what did that mean? Martha, I understand now what old Rock was up against. I'm not going to let them force me out into the middle of the road like they did him. Fighting for potatoes or lusses ahead of the Graham's ranch. What's Graham got to do with this? That's what Matt names to find out. on his way here to wipe you out. Why? He claims that he traced Russell stock onto your range. Is crazy or crooked. If there's any of his stuff on my range, I didn't put him there. But I... You fight them off. I'll go for help. It's come, honey. Get into the house. No, Dad. I'm going to stay here with you. Well, pet. Bring me a gun. Hold up, Manton. What's the idea, Tom? We traced stock onto this range. We came for a showdown. Did you see the stock? No, but some of my boys are after it now. We just stole them. Not a man of mine left this place this morning. It looks to me like you're being stampeded into something you'll be sorry for. What ailed you, Tom? Getting soft on account of that Graham girl? You keep her out of it. I will, but see to what you do, too. Why can't we talk this over? I came for action, not talk. Why not try my way first? All right. You boys stay here. Manton, if any of your stock's on my range, it's without my knowledge. Who was that that just left by the hill trail? It was Bert Mosgrave. Yes. Well, there's no harm in telling him that. He came to warn us. Warn you of what? That Manton was coming to wipe us out. How do you suppose Bert Mosgrave knew that? We lost that stock in the hills, Mr. Manton. Why, they were driven clear across this range. You get to the bottom of this. I aim to. And we are much closer than you think. I don't understand, Tom. You will. Anyway, I'm thanking you. Oh, 
Tom, I'm worried. What about? You've been doing all right, but you're in a tight spot now, and I don't want you to be discouraged. Why should I? I'm sitting on top of the world right now. Why, I just stamped out what might have been the beginning of a heap of trouble. Well, didn't work. Did Musket fall down? No, he started things all right, but our sheriff stopped them. Dogan, he's getting too close to the truth. You let me handle him. He's my me. No, no, he can't be handled like Rock was. Not so soon, anyhow. There's a soft spot in him somewhere, and I'm going to find it. I'm glad you were able to take good part. People are beginning to say you're on Briscoe's side. We both know the reason for that. You can't keep them apart forever, no more than Rock could. You've got to take a drastic step. Can't you see your way clear to do it? You mean arrest Bert Muscat? No, not arrest him. I mean the only kind of settlement they'd understand. Your way, Tom. I can't do that. No. What do you mean? I've given my word I wouldn't. To Beth? I had to. Brownlee. Howdy, Martha. Just heard about Rock. I'm sorry. Kind of lost track of you folks during the years. Who's sheriff now? Are you still under sheriff at Hornado? Yes. I reckon they couldn't operate without me. Is this an official visit? I aim to find out what happened to Tom Mitchell. Plenty of folks are interested in what became of him. You haven't told me who the sheriff was yet. I know I haven't. So Tom Mitchell is no more, writes the sheriff of Akatia. You know, that's the best news I've heard in years. <laughs> I knew I'd find his weak spot somewhere. Our sheriff and outlaw. And him, bedden so far backward that he's liable to break his neck. I'll break it for him. Brownie? You can have anything you want in this town. Thanks. All right. Have Mitchell appoint me first deputy. <laughs> You're a genius. <laughs> and then when Tom goes out, you step in and take his place. <laughs> Drogan. Uh, ask the sheriff to come over here. And uh, ask him real polite. The sheriff be pleased to step into Mr. Briscoe's office on a very important matter. I'd be glad to step in his face, even on an unimportant one. You better go, Sheriff. He's got a brand on you that can't be altered. Yeah? All right. You go ahead. I'm kind of particular who I'm seen with.
Sheriff, sure. meet my old friend Sam Brownlee of Hornado, Texas. Or maybe you've met before. Seems like that you have Sam knowing so many interesting things about you. Well, what about me? I want you to appoint Brownlee here as your deputy. I reckon you do. And wouldn't you like for me to resign in favor of Lefty Drogan? I wouldn't buck too strong, fella. Under the circumstances, it's a mighty small thing Mr. Briscoe's asking. All right. Brownlee, there are some things I want you to know. And one is that you're not in Texas now. Back there, you can tell me where to head in. But here, you're only a deputy working for me. And you'll take my orders and like them. The first thing I want you to do is to arrest Bert Mostert. I'm sure Mr. Briscoe will like that. Everybody knows that he and Bert are on the opposite sides of the fence. Come along, I'll get you a star. Drogan, it's time to change sheriffs again. I just saw Tom leaving town in a hurry. He got word Bert Moskrit could be found in Eagle Pass. But who'd send that word, Sam? It might be a trap for Tom. Sheriff Cummins, get her out. Fool, what did you do that for? Let's get out of here. I want the man who just rode in here. Fred isn't here. I don't remember mentioning his name. Now, see here, Mitchell. We're not going to stand for you taking sides against us. Bert is one of us. He's been organizing it. You don't know what you're saying, Mr. Graham. Besides, you're obstructing justice. I could have killed him, but I didn't. Because I promised you I wouldn't. But I am going to arrest him. Dirty double crosser. You're talking too much. The sheriff knew it was a trap and sprung it. Jake's dead and Bert's been arrested. I'm going to make one last play. If it fails, it'll be up to you. It's 
Tell me you've jailed Moscrip. They tell you right. What's the charge? Murder. He killed Rock Land. Rot. Where's your proof? That's my business. You're carrying things mighty high-handed. One of these days, you'll tackle something you can't handle. Now, uh, you turn my script loose. I'll be responsible for him. For the man you're supposed to be fighting? You turning him loose? No. I kept you on the job hoping you'd come off your high horse and be reasonable. But I guess wrong. I'm serving you notice right here and now. We're through playing. I'm giving you until noon to turn my script loose. If you don't, we'll be electing another sheriff. So think it over until noon. Keep off the street. Grogan is out gunning for the sheriff. So, our new sheriff is an outlaw with a $500 reward on his head. And I'm collecting it at noon. Why, you? Wait. You can't talk about Tom Mitchell that way. Get out of here. Come on. Why, you old... Did you hear me? Drogan's telling everybody about you. He says he's going to shoot you on sight. You've got to get him first. You mean you won't? You can't because of that promise? Have you seen Beth Graham? Yes, she's in Rude's store. I want to talk to you. Beth, do you want Tom Mitchell to be murdered? No. Why? He will be if you don't free him from that fool promise you made him give you. Drogan is Briscoe's prize killer. He's going to shoot Tom on sight. And because of you, Tom's waiting for him to do it. Are you sure you got me covered? It's all set. And I sent for Menton in case you miss. I won't. Five minutes. Tom, Drogan's going to kill you. You mustn't dread him. What am I going to do? Run away? No, go get him first. How can I? There's my promise to you. I said you mustn't shoot except to save your own life. You can't let him kill you. You mean so much to me, Tom. Don't worry, honey. I'll take care of Mr. Briscoe's bad man. Dead or alive, jailbird. Stop coming or it'll be dead. I want you, Drogan. An outlaw craves Lefty Drogan. Or what? Or is it a secret? I warned you about laughing at the law. Now pitch up or go for your gun. What's this I hear about you being an outlaw? There's my answer. It's true, men. I got proof he's wanted in Texas. Looks like this calls for one of them talks our sheriff is so fond of. Let's get undercover. I'm accused of being an outlaw in order to keep back facts that will condemn the killer of Rock Land. I'm asking that the accusation be proved. It will be. I'm calling on Under Sheriff Brownlee of Hornado, Texas, to tell what he knows. Hornado was like this town. Little ranchers and big ones, too. 
In particular, one human hog who wanted it all. Of all the dirty things he'd done, the worst was to import two deadly killers, gunmen without souls. There was a young rancher bucking him, a straight shooting kid. The killers tried to get the kid, but he called them out and settled them in fair fight. But the big rancher had the pull, so it was called murder. What kind of talk is this, Brownie? It's the truth. I didn't come here to arrest Tom Mitchell. We got word that he was dead. And I came to settle with whoever had done it. What Tom did gave the rest of us courage enough to clean house. They don't want to jail him. They want to pin a medal on him. When I got here, I found he was your sheriff in a spot that would either make or break him. So we framed a little game with Tom's idea. And when your human hog here took the bait and had me made a deputy, I found out enough about him to hang him twice over. He'd planted a traitor among the small ranchers to betray them. Moss Crip was playing Briscoe's game all along. And it was Moss Crip that killed Sheriff Rock Lance. You lying double crosser. I'll shut him up for you. Come on, let's get him out of here. Well, Tom, I guess I owe you an apology. You were right all the time. You know, I'll be expecting you to... You know, Tom, there's another dance tomorrow night. And I'm taking you. 